Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Nimbus version two or V2. I've had a uh, pretty good experience with Giant Mouse knives. They definitely do have some models that I very much love. I'm gonna be linking Giant Mouse knives right down below so you can check out everything that they offer, as well as this guy, because this guy is absolutely available. So you can use those links if you want to. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this came in one of the Going Gear EDC monthly packages. There is a link for Going Gear as well down there. So thank you to Going Gear for uh, providing this for review. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of the Ace Nimbus V2. Ace Nimbus V2 coming in at seven, at seven and a quarter. Blade length is coming in at exactly three inches and cutting edge is also coming in at exactly three inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Definitely about the same length as the Rat 2. It's just got more presence. Little presence. Uh, how about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Very similar to the Spyderco Para 3. Look, this particular one looks a lot like my own personal Para 3 with these uh, Micarta RGT scales. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely got some more cutting edge. It's just different in the you know, the profile and ergonomic lines. Now let's do one more. I don't think we need to do more than this. Up against the Benchmade bug out. So there you go. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna give you guys an example of the action. So this is a liner lock and it's actually running on phosphor bronze. Some weird phosphor bronze washers. We're gonna talk about that here in a sec. Um, the action is smooth, but tight. And I took this thing apart um, to see if maybe I could improve the action. You can flick it out. It's very tight. This is quite a bit of pressure, and I could not get it. If I loosen this thing up anymore, it's going to wiggle, right? Uh, I don't want there to be any wiggle. I can flick it out, but this is it takes a very specific angle of force and quite a bit of it to do that. It, this is not going to be a very luxuriously smooth, uh, you know, like where you can just turn it and it's gonna fall shut. It's not gonna do that. Carry profile up against the Spider Code Para 3. Wow, it's actually pretty thick. Uh, there's there's uh, some <laughs> a fair amount of contouring though. So it's like I always say, if they're gonna make it a thick boy, contour it so it you know fills the hand comfortably. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Uh, where is it? There it is. Uh, so here you go. It's not an overly, other than being kind of thick, it's really not that much more knife to be carrying than the pair of three, really. Length and height are pretty good. Uh, materials. We are looking at micarta for the scales. We are looking at LMAX for the blade, which is a steel that I very much enjoy. Um, and then the, if I can, where did my magnet go? There it is. Um, yeah, steel liners. So there you go. These are made in uh, Italy, by the way. Maniago uh, in Italy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm sure I'm not. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there you go. Uh, weight on this guy. Oh, we didn't look at the inside. Let's take a look at the inside. So we are looking at a little bit of milling. Uh, you can see it better, I think, back here on the steel liners, which is good because those, you know, that little bit of milling goes a long way when we're talking about steel, which is heavy. Um, weight coming in at 3.88 ounces, not perfect ratios, but then again, it's a 3.88 ounce object, right? Uh, if you if you like to wear wind pants, probably not going to be the most comfortable thing to carry. But if you like, you know, jeans and regular cargo pants, work pants, things like that, yeah, this will be just fine. Shouldn't be a problem. Just depends on what you like to carry, what you're used to, what you're used to carrying. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. We'll get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very, very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Um, the pivot is a T8. It is free spinning, but I did get this out here out of the knife really easily, just to let you guys know. The screw that holds in the pocket clip is also T8, and then these two body screws are T6. Taking this apart was actually pretty simple. Uh, I did not have a problem with it at all. Uh, so that's nice. It's always nice to be able to easily take apart your knives. 
Okay, so uh, real quick, I'd like to show you guys a picture of what the washers look on this uh, look like on this thing. Uh, so on screen right now, you're seeing after I had disassembled it, I realized because I was like, "What the heck is going on in here? Why is it so tight?" I still don't know. I don't know if this is something that Giant Mouse has done before. Uh, I don't know if this is something that other companies have done before. I, I on their website it says they switched, you know, between the V1 and V2, they went from bearings to their own specialized phosphor bronze washers. So I'm assuming this is their thing. Whether or not this is a new, I have no idea. I've never seen a washer. I've never seen washers like this. This is really weird. I have to assume that that's what is attributing, because I've handled plenty of knives with phosphor bronze washers and they don't feel that tight, right? Now, is that a durable setup? Oh yeah. Uh, it makes it pretty much impossible for anything to get inside the pivot. I think it's overkill. And honestly, I'm not able to say exactly how that makes it more durable than just a flat surface with regular phosphor bronze washers, which probably, it's probably what they should have done. I don't know. I don't know exactly why the action is slowing down so much, but to get this action, I'll just demonstrate. To get it to the point where it's nice and, you know, where you'd want it to be with phosphor bronze, you gotta really loosen this thing up. I mean, even here, it still feels pretty tight, but look what's happening to the centering, right? It's coming off and we are very, very wiggly, very wiggly. Getting this back down to the point where it's not wiggling, it's still wiggling a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yeah, now it's just tight again. And the centering is still, I'll be honest with you, the centering was perfect. I should have showed the centering before I did the disassembly. I did that off camera. The centering was honestly right on. It did not uncenter until after I did this. But it's to the point now where it's back to flickable, but not the best, right? Now, if you see here, as soon as I disengage that liner lock, it's it's actually wanting to fall. So it may not be the washers that are doing that, right? It might just be the tension on the lock bar, which is absolutely something that can affect action. Now, if that is the case, a little bit and we'll actually do this on camera, right? A little bit of 10 weight nano oil, which is also something that you can get in uh, at that, that Amazon store where I show everything that I use on this channel. It's all highly recommendable stuff, not that expensive. Putting a little drop, I know it looked like I put a lot on there, but just a little drop right on that detent ball and then working it in, usually will dramatically improve the action. And I'm finding that to actually be the case here now. So this is much easier. Are we still actually with zero blade play? We actually still have a little bit of blade play. I didn't tighten it down enough. I was gonna say, I was like, that feels like way better. Okay, so it's okay now. But let me be clear about this. This knife is tight. And giant mouse knives are kind of I don't know about you guys, but my experience is even their bearing knives are a bit tight. I don't know what it is. It seems like it might be the lock bar tension. So initially I was gonna say it, it might be these, you know, specialized washers that are creating this unnecessary, this is gonna happen with my Carta, by the way. Uh, you get some oil, it's real easy to scrub out, right? Anybody who scrubbed out my Carta would tell you the same thing. You can just use a sponge and some soapy water and it'll be like new, right? So if you get one of these and you oh no, I got some oil, it's no big deal. It's not really that big of a deal. But um, yeah, I think it might be the lock bar tension um, or maybe the surfaces that, you know, a combination of kind of intense lock bar tension and maybe uh, the surfaces of, um, you know, the surface of the blade. I don't know if it's like causing excess friction or something like that, because this is still, while it is better, it is still very tight versus, you know, the bug out which this is phosphor bronze. And yeah, it's walking up completely and totally solid. This is way smoother, way. And I understand it's a rounded tang and it's the axis lock, right? But this is very, it's very tight. So just be aware of that. It still functions. It's not a deal breaker, but it's very tight. Ergonomically, eh, it's okay. This area is kind of weird. Plenty of access to the liner lock, right? That'll, that'll work. 
Um, getting it uh, to disengage easily and then come down and not cut your thumb is pretty easy, right? Um, doing the reverse flick with this guy, because that's what people are going to try to do. Yeah, it's possible, but you have to dig at it because on this side, the hole is buried underneath. The Just carve this out. That's what people want to do, right? They want to reverse flick these. And because they buried it, you have to dig at it. Just cut it out, right? And match the other side. It's fine. Um, it'll, it'll, we'll still have, because of this dip right here, we'll still have plenty of room to access the, um, you know, the hole there. Um, but, uh, okay. Yeah. It is contoured though. And, you know, uh, like gripping this thing, there's, there's a lot of handle in your hand. So it is the fact that it, the scales are a little thicker and contoured, right? You have that reassurance. You can definitely feel the pocket clip and this area right here is not like, it does not feel like an organic area for the human hand. It's okay. Uh, I'd give the ergonomics maybe a C plus to a B minus. They're, they're all right. Um, but yeah, it's going to do really well in a heavy working environment because of the setup here, right? There's plenty to hang on to. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Plenty to hang on to. You can lock in. They have those big, weird phosphor bronze washers. It's not, you know, dusty, dirty environments are not going to slow this knife down. Um, we have a satin finished blade, which I am incredibly bored with. Just like plain Jane satin finish, you know, just nothing special going on. It's fine if you like that. I just prefer a tumbled blade. Um, we have, I didn't actually measure the blade stock thickness. Maybe we should do that here real quick. So blade stock thickness. Uh-oh, are we finally... I think, I think we're finally, um, oh, no, no, uh, we want to do, can we, oh, there we go. No, it just, it, it was just glitching out just a little. I thought we finally killed this thing. Blade stock thickness on this guy is coming in at about 135 thousandths, which I think is pretty typical for giant mouse. It is a fully flat, nearly fully flat ground blade, and it comes down to a kind of medium thick edge. Um, so yeah, it'll be fine for outdoor use. It'll definitely cut and slice. The edge is not like, wow, incredible. It's sharpened so well, but it's, it's sharpened okay, right? It feels sharp enough. And, uh, I think, I think Giant Mouse does a good job heat treating steels like Elmax. So, um, I think, uh, yeah, this will be just fine. I like the Elmax composition. It's very similar to S35VN. I think it's got a little bit better edge retention, um, and... I think it's actually relatively similar similar in uh, corrosion resistance. But uh, yeah, it's a great working steel, so that'll be fine. The areas inside of the hole are nicely knocked down, which is great because most of the time you're going to be opening it like this or like this. And how I'm opening that is getting the meat of my finger in there, and then I'm pushing more up first and then out to get it to flick, which is how I like to open my knives, right? I don't like to use wrist. I think that's, you know... If you have to do this, I, my opinion is that you're doing it wrong. You should be able to hold your wrist steady and just flip it out like that. Um, so yeah, fit and finish uh, as far as the blade and seating of the hardware, the seating of the scales, everything like that. It all looks really good. And like I said, uh, like I said earlier, it was centered when I got it. This is uh, the pocket clip is able to be mounted for right or left-handed carry. Left-handed folks, you're going to have a lot harder time doing the regular flick, but a lot easier time doing the reverse flick because you have a lot more room over here. Um, if you're left-handed, the easiest way to open it is just a pinch open, and then you'll be dealing with a right-handed liner lock. So at least they offered the different mounting positions, right? Uh, a couple of standoffs back here. The liners are lipped, so they are not countersunk or nested. Um, there's a lanyard thing, that, which is totally out of the way of the pocket clip, so that's fine. Wire clips, they're pretty good, pretty strong. Um, they don't offer much in the way of, you know, it's kind of like a, as far as like the design language, a wire clip never looks perfect with any design, but it never looks bad. It just is what it is. This is fine, right? It just looks like a paper clip, um, and it carries plenty deep, so it's okay. It's just kind of a bother. I can feel it when I'm gripping this knife. I love that this is a liner lock and not an exposed frame lock. That means I can grip this thing as hard as I want. Not going to affect lockup geometry. And I also don't have to worry about where my fingers are when I'm flicking it, right? Because it's not exposed. The lock is underneath the scale. So that's great. Um, we have jimping out where it counts. Like if you're actually going to put your thumb back here, you're going to be doing stuff like this. So I love that they actually put it out here. And I also like 
that the um, spine is radius. That's a nice touch. You're not going to be able to effectively strike a ferro rod off of the, you know, the spine, but eh, no, okay, there are different knives for that, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, what else can I really say here? Stop pin, it's located right there. There is a lot of shouldering. You can say it's totally, you can see it's completely consumed by the blade tang, so that's nice to see. We are locking up at, I don't know, 15 to 20%. Um, there was a hint of lock stick. I think it's starting to go away. The lockup, let's give it a good, you know, uh, lockup is fine. No blade play up, down, left, or right now that I've got it nice and tight. No pivot lash. And there's definitely, well, I was about to say there's no detent lash, but you know what? There's a little tiny bit. I, know that, I don't know that it matters. That's Detent lash is just something that I check for that um, tells me how tight the tolerances are how precision everything is machined. And usually Giant Mouse doesn't have an issue with that. It might be that you get this and yours has no detent lash. And what I mean is when your knife is closed, if you can pull and feel it clicking, that means the detent ball is not perfectly fitted to the hole and it's kind of bouncing around, right? Moving around in there. Not really that big of a deal. It's not going to affect performance or it shouldn't. You don't want like a huge like clunk, 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 you know, but a little bit like this. You can see the blade moving up and down just a little bit, right? Um, and uh, the blade will always move up and down a little bit just from pulling on it. But I'm saying that movement is due to the ball being smaller than the hole that is was made to fit it. Um, so, yeah. So, really my biggest issues here with this knife are the ergonomic lines are a little bit weird. The action is very tight. Um, and the pocket clip creates a little bit of a hot spot. But... As far as a working tool, go, I mean, this was designed to be an outdoor working tool. It says right there on the, you know. I know people are like, well, there's lots of, like, whenever you review knives that are meant to, that are, you know, created as self-defense knives, you just wave that off and review it as a, either a working tool or a general EDC knife. You know why I do that? Because no matter what things are designed for, 99.999% of people will either use their knives as general light use EDC knives or hard use outdoor knives. That is most of what things get used for, right? It's not like there's this massive population of people doing incredibly tactical self-defense stuff with their knives every day, right? So, yeah, okay. Like this, this thing was designed as an outdoor work knife and it'll serve that role. It'll also serve the role of general EDC thing, right? It, it, yeah, it'll do that. Um, I think that there's a lot of competition. Um, I think that, uh, you know, at this price point, uh, which is about 100 and, what is this, 175, 180, something like that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty much completely and totally annihilated by the um, Ritter Hogue, which is also running on phosphor bronze and is way easier to open and close. The downside to this guy is that it is using the Able Lock, which, you know, I've had this knife since the dawn of this channel, and uh, it's deployed in every single knife review. So think about how often that thing is deployed. Never had an issue with the Omega Springs. But just thinking, like, would I rather have this for like this outdoor work knife that is, you know, just barely four fingers and kind of an awkward tight liner lock. Or would I rather have the full size Ritter Hogue? You know, <laughs> that's uh, a much, it's much easier to manipulate and it costs less, right? This, these guys are about 160 in US made. So there's, the, and, and that's just one example. There's lots of examples out there. This is okay. If you love this knife, if you love how it looks and you're like, I can deal with it then, you know, knock yourself out because it's made well. It's just really tight and kind of awkward. I'm not going to tell people to rush out and buy this, though. It's one of those things where the, it's just, you know, if I was going to letter grade it, which I've been doing here lately, I don't know what the deal is with that, I'd just give it a C. This is just like a C. It's just not, you know, the price isn't bad. It's not great. Ergonomics aren't terrible, but they're not great. The action's tight, but it's manageable. The whole thing is just kind of underwhelming, right? So, okay. There it is. 
do with that information what you will. It's linked down below if you want to pick it up. If you want to say, you know what, Complex, I don't care what you think. I love it. I want to pick it up. Well, the link's right down there and it benefits my channel. But my honest thoughts are, eh, look around. There's lots of stuff. This this should be nobody's first choice. You know, that's that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say today. Um, thanks again to Going Gear for providing this for review. This will likely get given away in one of my live streams. So if you're new to my channel, uh, I not only do I do daily content, but I give away a lot of knives because this channel gets a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> stuff that's, that does not automatically grant it a positive review, right? So the benefit here is uh, to you guys. Um, if you are interested in winning this and other items, uh, subscribe because I do usually weekly live streams. Uh, and like I said, I give away a lot of stuff. So anyways, um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.